do you still do lashes? You booked a fill-in slot, but you have lash mites. I can't, I, what do you want me to do here? I don't know what y'all got going on, but please. <laughs> Everybody, welcome to my channel. I'm Joyden. I'm a lash tech and a lash instructor. I've been doing lashes for five years and I've been training for three and a half. I do have an online lash course. It is linked down below as well as marketing eBooks to help you grow your clientele. But this video is just gonna be on common mistakes that new lash techs are making and I don't want y'all to make these mistakes anymore. This is just gonna be to help y'all further your lash career a lot faster so you don't have to make these mistakes. So let's go ahead and get into the video. First mistake really isn't a mistake, it's just my opinion. But also keep in mind, I'm left-handed so a lot of stuff I do is backwards. So you don't really have to do this one. This might not really be a mistake for most people. I personally place the lash from underneath. I do this because I don't like the lashes to get stuck to the tape. When I place on top, they get stuck to the lashes. So when you have somebody come with curly lashes, it's gonna be difficult to place it regardless. So you have to place it wherever, on top, bottom, side, it doesn't matter. I'm always gonna tell my students to try to place underneath because in my opinion, this is another, this goes into another mistake, which is retention issues and stuff, but placing from underneath, to me, with my retention, works better than placing on top. So if you are having an issue with the lashes sticking to the tape, try to place underneath the lashes instead of on top, taping the lids back. So let's go into mistake number two, which is retention problems. A lot of beginner lash techs don't know about humidity and temperatures. That is gonna play a big role in your retention. Humidity and temperature, make sure those are in range. Every glue is gonna have its own humidity and temperature range that it's gonna work in. If your humidity and temperature and or if your humidity or your temperature is out of range, usually that's gonna be the first indicator it causes your client's lashes to come out. So just make sure every time you are purchasing a glue, just make sure it is in range with the humidity and temperature first. Because if you're just buying a glue because your friend said, hey, this glue works good, it might not work for you. So just keep that in mind. The glue I used to use in North Carolina, I cannot use in Georgia. I don't know, um, it doesn't work. So the glue I used to use at the last salon does not work in the salon I'm in now. Your spring and summer glue sometimes you cannot use in the winter and the fall. If you have no idea what your humidity and your temperature is, and you are having retention issues, the first thing you need to do is buy a hygrometer. I think it is in my Amazon favorites video. I'll go ahead and link that below, but I will also link a hygrometer down below. Along with the humidity and temperature, you can be using too much or too little glue. So if you use too much glue, lashes aren't gonna stick correctly. If you don't use enough glue, they're not gonna adhere properly. So that, as well as primer and bonder. I've noticed when people use primer and bonder together, I'm not gonna recommend it. If you wanna use one, just pick one. Once you start incorporating too many products, it's just, it's too much going on. Those lashes usually fall out. Tell the client to come with clean lashes and then use Bonder. That's what I'm gonna recommend. Primer, for some reason, completely strips the lashes. You also do not have to prime every client if you do use primer. So the only time I'm gonna recommend using primer, if you are using it, is on clients who have oily skin and their lashes get super oily, but regardless of you priming their lashes, they're usually going to fall out earlier than majority of your clients who don't have oily skin. So that is something to know. Some people just not gonna be able to keep their lashes on. You will definitely, me being a lash tech for five years, I still have certain clients who have been coming to me for like the past three years. Some of them can go four weeks and they will come back with basically a full set of lashes for their fill-in and then other clients, they come back every two weeks with three lashes. And I'm like, what were you doing? Once you realize that retention isn't always your fault, you got the lashing down pat, like retention issues won't really worry you too much because you'll know some clients pull their lashes out. Majority of your clients, like 30, 40% of your clients are going to pull the lashes out due to anxiety and just, you know, things like that. So it's not always you. Yes, of course, if your humidity, your temperature, your application, all of those things are off, it might be you, but if all of your things are in order and then there's a client who just repetitively always is like, hey, my lashes fell out, it's three days later. Hey, it's a week later, my lashes fell out. Okay, she's pulling her lashes out. Another mistake is following trends that are literally just trends. Like 
certain things you don't want to do in your business because it's going to put you in a box. For example, you're a beginner lash tech, you barely know what you're doing, but you know, the trend is colored lashes. That is gonna put you in a box. You're gonna get a certain type of clientele. If that's the type of clientele you want, that's fine. That is perfectly fine. But just understand, once that trend is over, which I think the colored lashes and the charms on the lashes is kind of over with. Popular for like a year now, but most people are not walking around with colored lashes. Like that is a trend. We'll literally get it for like a birthday, a special occasion. But if you are marketing yourself as like, and I tell y'all all the time to market yourself to be different than other people but you got to know where to be different don't just okay i want to do color lashes because that's going to give a certain type of vibe and you're going to get that certain type of client and that's going to be cool if that's what you want to do but once the color lashes trend is out you're going to have to figure out how to market yourself your business in a completely different way i don't know if y'all can kind of understand i feel like i'm confusing y'all with that another mistake is in the beginning, you are probably gonna have a lot of eye irritation, possibly allergic reactions, but there's definitely a difference between irritation and allergic reactions, and I do teach that in my lash course. Irritation, when you first start, I'm not gonna say it's common, but it's a part of the learning process. So it's not like you are about to take the lash training and then you do 10, 20 people and nobody has irritation. Like that's gonna be super rare because you are still learning how to tape up the bottom lashes correctly. You don't know what glue you're using. You don't know how much glue you're using. Fumes are gonna get in their eye and part of their eye is usually gonna be red. It happens, so it's not a mistake, but you need to know how to operate when somebody is texting you, sending you a picture of their eye and it's red, what to do, what to say. When they first start off and somebody sends them a picture like, hey, my eye is red, like what's going on? What like, I'm having a reaction. From what I've seen, the lash tech is going to get, beginner lash techs are gonna get nervous and scared like, oh my gosh, here's a refund, like, no, please don't, no, you are not giving out a refund. You first have to assess what's going on because 99.9% .9 of people are going to be having irritation and not a reaction. When somebody says they're having a reaction, it's usually not a reaction. An actual allergic reaction is completely different than irritation. Things that can cause irritation, I hate that I have to say this, but um, I've seen it a lot. People who lash with animals in the room, I don't know what y'all got going on, but please. That is not the best thing to do because people are allergic to animals, pet dander, anything, and it's not, let's just not start off on Netflix. A lot of different reasons why somebody will have irritation. Like I said, pets in the room, you have tape, you have gel pads. Some people are allergic to certain tapes and some people are allergic to certain gel pads. Then you have just improper isolation. So two things with that, lashes can be stuck together. That is gonna cause irritation because it is pulling two lashes together and then when they're growing out, they're not growing out at the same length. So one over here is being pulled and this one is still stuck over here, it's gonna cause irritation. Another thing is if you get that glue, any type of glue on the skin, I always recommend using clear glue. It is hypoallergenic. Clear glue is linked down below, it's on Amazon. People can be allergic to just lash glue in general, like people are allergic to black hair dye. I'm gonna in the black lash glue, people can be allergic to that. As well as if you glue the lashes on the lash line, and I've seen people do that. Some people glue the lashes to the lash line, like every single lash on the lash line. You are gonna get and allergic, their eyes gonna swell shut like a golf ball. That is usually the only time that I've ever seen that happen because I did it on myself. Um, so please, I'm not gonna say don't lash yourself, but if you do lash yourself, don't come back and say I told you to do it. You will also see some people after, you know, their first appointment, this could be during their fillings or something, you will see clients who have lash mites and just dirty lashes. You have certain clients who just don't take proper care of their lashes and so over time when it's time for them to come in for a fill-in and it's like you book the fill-in slot but you have lash mites I can't I, what do you want me to do here I like you gotta either go home <laughs> and take these off or we gotta do a removal in a full set I can't literally will have lash mites on their lids and they have no irritation they're just fine so I don't know there's a lot that goes into irritation it is not always you it's not always your application it's not always the humidity and temperature and things like that, but those are definitely boxes you wanna check off first. 
So along with the irritation, a mistake I will definitely say is not having a consent form as a new elastic. Please have a consent form. I will show y'all how to make a consent form, but they're super easy and you can just go on Etsy, Google, wherever, and just get some free ones. Etsy has something like $2. Make them sign something or your QD site when they, when they book that they are agreeing to your terms and conditions. Always have that. You'll never have like an issue with it, but just make sure you do have a consent form. So something I've noticed my students do in their training is they are lashing from their point of view. So from behind the client compared to what the client sees. So your angle from behind is the worst possible angle. You are gonna think the lashes are sparse or look a certain way. You might be doing a hybrid set. This will happen with me. I'll be lashing and I'm like, okay, they don't look cool for my angle. So I'll keep lashing more and then I'll put the mirror in front and then I'm like, oh, this looks like a volume set now. So just go off of what's on the mirror and remember you do not have to always lash 100% of the lash. We have talked about that. I'm not even putting that as a mistake. A lot of new lash techs are going to neglect their social media presence. Or what y'all like to do is y'all will go all in right after you training for like, a month. I go back on y'all's pages and I'm like, do you still do lashes? Like, do you still do lashes? That's what I be trying to tell y'all. If you don't want to do social media and lashing, it's kind of hard unless you want to pay somebody to do their social media for you, however you want to do that. But your social media presence, especially when you first start off, is this is literally your portfolio. If you have no pictures, if you don't have any content on that lash page, like you just need to not do it. So just make sure you are keeping up with your social media. Um, of course, you can get to a point like if y'all, y'all be going to my last page and I'm like, y'all are really following my last page and I do not post anymore. So I'm gonna get back to posting for y'all, but like most of my clients know I'm about to retire. So that's why I stopped posting, but I'll post for y'all. I'll post for y'all any day. But definitely just get in the mode of posting on that social media page because if you are not posting, nobody knows you are doing lashes. So please get on your Zoom because if you don't, you're not gonna have any clients. And I don't want that for y'all. This one is a big one. And I see it all over TikTok. I see it everywhere for some reason. And I just wanna tell my story because people think things in the beauty industry, it's cute. It's so fun once you get into it. I tell y'all this all the time. But getting started, if you are not consistent, it's not going to work. Even if the work is horrible, just keep going. I'm gonna need you to keep going because maybe in like two weeks, you fine. In my story time video of how I got started, the day I started, I had two weeks worth of clients booked up. Y'all saw how bad my first set was. So I was like, oh, that's crazy. But I literally had two more people left. I had a, what was that, an eight, 12, and a four. I gave myself enough time, four hours, to do every set. But I was like, okay, if I don't finish in four hours, it's gonna be another person at my door to get the lashes done. So I gotta figure something out. I couldn't cancel two weeks worth of people who already paid their deposit and everything. The first set that I did compared to the last set that I did after those two weeks looks completely different. You have to start off somewhere. I'm saying all of this to say, people think you can take one training class, whether that be online, in person, one-on-one, -on -one, group class, anything, and just be completely perfect and you've learned everything you need to know about the lash industry. I don't care how much you pay for the class. I don't care who's, who is teaching you. They can give you as much information as possible, but there are certain things you have to literally experience for yourself and learn for yourself. Y'all can watch all of my last videos. Y'all can buy my online course, all of my eBooks, take a one-on-one -on -one and a group training with me. And you will literally still not know everything. And I've trained nearly a thousand people. I'm good at teaching, okay? I'm, I'm gonna give you the sauce. I'm gonna give you everything you need to know about marketing and how to do lashes, but you'll have a manual and things like that to go over. But there are, it's so much information just with lashing, not even marketing. We don't even have to talk about marketing. Just with lashes, it's so much information. Some, like people just can't teach you. I can tell you all day, when you get somebody with some super curly lashes, plays from any angle, on top, on the side, on the bottom. And when you, you could be doing lashes for two, three months and get that first client who has twisted up curly 
lashes and you are like, oh my goodness, what do I do? I did not have a client who had super curly lashes until I was five months into lashing. I thought I was good. I already knew what I was doing. I was having like six, seven clients a day. It was easy. I got my first client who had curly lashes and I was like, what is this? I don't know how to do this. So I always tell people, if you do have somebody where you are not able to lash them, I would prefer you to just send them on their way than play in somebody lashes. Not saying you aren't confident, like you know what you're doing, but you're not confident is one thing then, okay, I literally don't know what I'm doing. You know, just understand that a lash training is just that, is literally giving you the basics. Some people are gonna go over a whole lot more. I'm gonna teach you how to do lashes and I'm gonna teach you how to do marketing, but at the same time, there are just certain things that you have to experience for yourself as a lash tech. I've had to take three bra classes. So in total, all three of those bra classes have totaled up to $5,000 for training. So even after I spent $5,000 on brow courses, when I started tattooing brows, I had no idea what I was doing, okay? Like, it was so many things I had to learn just trial and error. Lashing isn't gonna be that hard, but just understand like, your best practice is gonna be on people. So you can take all the classes in the world, but if you are scared to start, aren't consistent, you are gonna be like, oh, I need to take another class. Let me take another class. Let me take another class. And you just gonna waste money. <laughs> I'm telling you this from taking three brow classes. I could have just stuck with the one brow class I took and just kept going with my clients. But I was like, no, I feel like I'm missing something. Let me take another class. Let me take another class. Like, you just gonna have to keep going. You just gonna have to. Another big mistake is that people do not know how to properly run ads. If you do not know how to run ads, once you've you know, done a few clients, your work is looking decent, you can go ahead and start running Instagram ads to go ahead and build up your clientele. If you go out here and start running ads and you don't know what you are doing when you are running these ads, you are going to waste thousands of dollars. I don't want y'all to do that. So I will have a video on it. I always recommend if you don't know how to run Instagram ads, please don't run them. There's tons of other marketing techniques you can do besides running Instagram ads. But if you have money to play with, you wanna run Instagram ads. But if you don't know what you're doing, just let's not do it. Let's wait. And I've said it before, y'all just be targeting everybody in New York and you live in Texas and y'all targeting ages 18 to 85 men and women like come on let's, let's stop so that is it for the video and i will see y'all in my next one